When we gaze into the infinite wonders of the cosmos, the sheer number of stars is truly mind-blowing. Yet one star stands out above all in our sky, the sun blazing at the heart of our solar system. It's no wonder that people throughout history were inspired to create myths and legends about its captivating brilliance. Thanks to modern technology, we can now explore the sun's inner workings like never before, uncovering the incredible phenomena that occur within and around this powerful yellow dwarf. In this video, we'll take an in-depth journey into the sun, using different wavelengths of electromagnetic energy to reveal its secrets. Previously, we've delved into Jupiter and its moons through the lens of the electromagnetic spectrum, and today we'll use a similar approach to study the sun, a fiery sphere of plasma. The light we see from the sun is ancient. It takes about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us from the sun's surface, meaning we're always seeing it as it was moments ago. But if we consider the journey of photons from the sun's core, the light we receive today could be anywhere from 10,000 to 170,000 years old. So where do we begin? Just like peeling a fruit, let's start with the outer layers and work our way inward, beginning with the sun's corona, the outermost layer of its atmosphere. The image we'll examine was captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, a mission launched in February 2010 to study the sun's dynamic surface and atmosphere at various electromagnetic wavelengths. By looking beyond visible light, NASA has uncovered vital details that deepen our understanding of the sun. This particular image was taken using a 19.3 nanometer wavelength, corresponding to light in the extreme ultraviolet region. At a temperature of 1 million Kelvin, the sun's corona is clearly visible. Interestingly, this corona can also be seen during a total solar eclipse, a rare and awe-inspiring event visible to the naked eye. When the moon aligns perfectly between Earth and the sun, the sun's central bright disk, known as the photosphere, is momentarily hidden, revealing a radiant outer glow. This stunning view, though breathtaking, doesn't show the level of detail we can observe in the corona through images taken by the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO. These detailed images are invaluable tools for scientific research. Let's dive a bit deeper into the sun's features just below the corona. At a scorching temperature of 20 million Kelvin, you can see intensely vivid spots that mark the occurrence of solar flares. Here's some footage from a particularly active week for flares back in August 2022. Solar flares are both terrifying and mesmerizing. Massive explosions that hurl vast amounts of electromagnetic radiation into space. These flares are triggered when magnetic fields twist, distort, and rapidly reorganize themselves, a chaotic process driven by the turbulent plasma within the sun. But solar flares aren't the only source of radiation in the sun's atmosphere. Another intriguing feature is the coronal holes, visible as darker regions in the sun's corona. Let's take a closer look at these using extreme ultraviolet light. Coronal holes are areas of cooler, less dense plasma that are magnetically open. Instead of forming closed loops that return to the sun's surface, the magnetic field lines from these regions extend outward into the solar system. These open areas allow solar wind particles to escape more easily into space. When these solar winds collide with Earth's magnetosphere, they create the spectacular auroras that light up the night sky in polar regions. Using ultraviolet light to observe the sun's outer layers provides us with a clearer view of these fascinating features. Non-visible spectrum light is an extraordinary tool that reveals the sun in ways we can't see with the naked eye. For instance, solar filaments, also known as solar prominences, are large loops of plasma that rise from the sun's surface. These enormous loops can stretch hundreds of thousands of kilometers into space, dwarfing Earth in comparison. Although they can form quickly, some prominences remain stable in the corona for months. In this sped-up video, you can see a prominence snake its way out of the photosphere and into the sun's atmosphere. The speed at which this material moves highlights the immense power of the sun's magnetic fields. One surprising fact about the sun's atmosphere is that it sometimes experiences a kind of rain. Not all the charged plasma launched into the corona escapes into space. Some of it cools down and falls back to the sun's surface as coronal rain. This shimmering rain is a beautiful sight, though it's still incredibly hot, millions of degrees in temperature. But not all of the sun's plasma gently returns to the surface. Unlike on Earth, where clouds don't suddenly snap and shoot off into space, on the sun, tightly wound magnetic fields can cause this dramatic effect. In this time-lapse of a coronal mass ejection, you can watch as a structure forms on the sun's surface, only to eventually snap and send billions of tons of plasma hurtling across the solar system. Even with Earth's protective magnetic field, a powerful coronal mass ejection could wreak havoc on our satellites and electrical grids. 
All these incredible structures are captured by the SDO using a 30 nanometer wavelength of light, which lies within the extreme ultraviolet portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Capturing images of the sun's dynamic features requires precise timing as their activity fluctuates based on the sun's 11-year solar cycle, a cycle I recently covered in a video. Each solar structure we observe is influenced by the sun's activity level, making it crucial to know when these features are most likely to appear. What's fascinating is how different wavelengths of light can reveal entirely new aspects of the same solar phenomenon. For instance, consider these two images of the sun's corona, taken at the same time but using different wavelengths. The first, captured at a color temperature of 600,000 Kelvin, highlights the quieter regions of the corona, showcasing coronal loops. The second, at a much hotter 2 million Kelvin, reveals the active regions of the corona. The stark contrast between these two images underscores the importance of using diverse approaches when studying our star. What may seem like a single solar event can actually be a complex interconnected series of occurrences. And we're still not through the sun's atmosphere yet. Moving inward, let's explore the transition region, captured by the SDO using a 160 nanometer wavelength of light. The transition region is a thin layer between the sun's corona and the chromosphere, only about 100 kilometers thick. Despite its size, it's a region of dramatic temperature change, where the sun's heat spikes from around 8,000 Kelvin to a scorching 500,000 Kelvin. To put that in perspective, the hottest lava erupting from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano is around 1,443 Kelvin. Yet the lower end of the transition region is almost six times hotter, and the upper end over 346 times hotter. As we delve even deeper, we arrive at the chromosphere, the last layer of the sun's atmosphere before reaching its surface. The chromosphere, imaged here using 170 nanometer ultraviolet light, is estimated to be about 1,700 kilometers thick. Within this layer, we encounter remarkable features called spicules. These jets of plasma rise from the sun's surface like long blades of grass swaying in the wind, shooting upwards at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per second, roughly 282 times the speed of sound. Spicules can reach lengths of nearly 10 kilometers, towering over Mount Everest by more than a kilometer. They form and disappear in just 5, 10 minutes, and for a long time their origins were a mystery. It wasn't clear how magnetically charged particles could escape the sun's magnetic field so quickly. But in 2017, a team of scientists working on a detailed model of spicules discovered that their formation is likely tied to neutral particles, solving a long-standing puzzle. Scientists initially overlooked neutral particles in their models of the sun, assuming they had no significant impact on the movement of magnetically charged particles. However, when these neutral particles were finally included, it was discovered that they provided the unexpected buoyancy needed for the charged particles to escape the sun's plasma and form spicules. As we descend further through the sun's lower atmosphere, we reach the photosphere, the sun's surface, which is best viewed using visible light. Though the edge of the photosphere may appear sharp and defined, this is merely an illusion caused by the sun's immense distance from us. In reality, the sun isn't solid at all. With temperatures too extreme for matter to exist in solid, liquid, or gas forms, the sun is entirely composed of plasma, the fourth state of matter, making up 99.9% .9 of all matter in the universe. Plasma behaves much like a gas, but it consists of ionized atoms and free electrons. The photosphere, the sun's outermost layer is about 400 kilometers thick, and contrary to its appearance, it is not a solid boundary. Unfortunately, this is the deepest layer of the sun that scientists can directly observe. If you look closely, you might notice some dark spots on the left side of the photosphere. These are sunspots, which appear darker because they are cooler than the surrounding areas, though still incredibly hot. Unlike coronal holes, sunspots form in regions where magnetic fields are especially strong trapping heat beneath the photosphere by reducing convection in these areas. When we compare this image of the sun to one taken with extreme ultraviolet light over the same period, we see a clear connection between sun spots and solar flares. They often occur in the same locations. It becomes evident that one phenomenon leads to the other. Now let's take a closer look at some similar sunspots. This image, captured by the Swedish Solar Telescope on Earth, uses visible light at a wavelength of approximately 400 nanometers. Surrounding the sunspots, the photosphere is dotted with jagged-edged, ever-changing cells that resemble cooling, cracking lava. These cells, known as solar granules, are about 1,000 kilometers wide 
and represent the top layer of a churning convection cell beneath the sun's surface. The brighter areas within each granule show unimaginably hot fluid rising from the sun's upper interior layer to the surface. Once at the surface, the fluid spreads outward, cools, and sinks back down along the dark, rough edges of each cell, repeating the cycle. This process is similar to the convection currents within Earth's mantle, which drive plate tectonics. Despite their brief lifespan of around 20 minutes, these granules play a significant role in the sun's dynamics. The flow within these cells reaches supersonic speeds of more than 7 kilometers per second, creating waves on the sun's surface due to sonic booms. Interestingly, these granules can also be seen in the full disk image of the sun we viewed earlier, captured using the same visible light wavelength. You might notice that this image appears somewhat grainy for such a high-tech space probe. And you'd be right, but that graininess is not a processing effect. It's the granules on the sun's photosphere. And that's where our journey ends for now. Unfortunately, scientists haven't yet figured out how to image deeper into the sun, using either visible or non-visible light. Much of what lies beneath this layer remains a mystery. However, our exploration has shown the incredible value of using different wavelengths of light to study the sun, revealing details that would otherwise remain hidden. Thanks to advanced imaging techniques, we're able to see the sun's dynamic features, like explosive solar flares, expansive coronal holes, swaying spicules, intriguing sunspots and shape-shifting cells in ways that were once unimaginable. The sun is alive with activity, much of which would remain invisible without these tools. Who knows what other wonders we might uncover as our technology continues to advance. Maybe one day, we'll peer even deeper into the sun, using methods that seem like science fiction to us now, just as our current techniques would have seemed impossible to ancient observers. For now, just knowing that so much is happening unseen in the universe fills me with excitement and curiosity. What other mysteries are out there waiting to be discovered? Have you ever wanted to witness some of these solar phenomena with your own eyes?